So in the first two parts, we talked about what the Gram-Schmidt process is, and we gave an example. In this part of the lecture, what I want to do is kind of give you a, a flavor or a broad idea of why the Gram-Schmidt process works. So we'll kind of set up the uh, details in this part, and then we'll talk about the connection to the Gram-Schmidt into the last part of today's lecture. So why does this whole process work? Well, it has to do with this notion of projection. So here's kind of a situation here we want to look at in a little bit of detail. Suppose, suppose that we fix some vector a. Okay. Now, given any vector u, we want to decompose u into a scalar multiple of a and a vector orthogonal to a. Now, as, as it's written, it may be a little unclear exactly what we're trying to do here. So you have to imagine what we're doing is we're given some sort of vector a. And a, once you have your a, defines some sort of line. Right? So that we have some sort of line. And one way to think about what this line is, the line is equal to the span of the vector a. And for now, let's just call this w. Okay, so that's a, w is this the span once you've fixed your vector a. Now, somebody comes along and gives you a vector u. So here we go. Here's my vector u. So now what we want to do is we want to decompose this into a vector that's a scalar multiple of a. So to be a scalar multiple of a, it has to be somewhere in w. It has to be a multiple of a. Right? So here we want to write u as w1 plus w2, where w1, we want it to be a scalar multiple of a. And then the w2 is asking to be orthogonal to a. So orthogonal to a. And one way to kind of visualize what's being asked here is you can think about asking, say you have a flashlight and you're, you're shining here. You have a flashlight some somewhere where the hand is over here. And when it projects down, right, it, gives, it gives you a shadow on the line separated right here. And what we want to do is we want to be able to project it down so that when it hits here, the line that it creates, it creates a 90, 90 degree angle. So maybe it's a little easier if I draw the picture here. Uh, so let's say when you have this guy here, we want to project it down and we want this to be a 90 degree angle. So what we're looking for is this vector here, which is w1, that's a scalar multiple of a. And then we also want to know is what is this vector right here? So what is this vector right here? So this would be my w2. And it's orthogonal to a. Now normally we would have written the w2 down here, but I've kind of added the two vectors together. So we want to decompose a into those two pieces and we want to give names to each of these pieces. So W1 is called the orthogonal projection. The orthogonal projection of U onto W, which is equal to the span of the vector A. And sometimes we just write it as this way, the projection onto W of U. And W2 is called the complement of u orthogonal to w, right? Because the vector w2 is not only is it orthogonal to the vector a, it's orthogonal to every vector that's inside of the span. Okay, so we're decomposing it into two parts. Now, I think the textbook actually works out all the details, but it may be written in the language of inner products. But let me do it in the special case that we're looking in. So if W is a span of A, so think of it as a line in some sort of Rn, can we actually figure out a formula for this vector W1? And in fact, we can. We can write it like this. So W1, right, which is by definition, oh, I've already had that over here. Uh, which is w1 is defined to be u dotted with a, a dotted with a times the vector a. And this kind of makes sense. It should be a scalar multiple of a because this vector should be on this line. 
and the question is what is the scalar and the scalar is given by this form right here okay now one thing that you want to notice is that a is a basis for w okay so we can actually generalize this idea okay so the idea generalizes this in the following way suppose that instead of having just one vector in w there is a whole bunch of vectors that form a basis of w and now you take some sort of vector in rn then the projection when we write the projection of w of u is this is the projection of u onto w okay and so let me say give you hopefully an example that will illustrate what we're doing we have w here's some big space spanned by w and I have a vector that maybe it's popping out of side of W. It's not inside of it. So there's my vector U. And what we want to do is we want to project it down into a point inside of W. And this vector from here to here is going to be the projection of U onto W. And we want to do it so that this vector So we want this vector, the vector pointing up to you, to be orthogonal to every vector in W. Okay. So it turns out that you can do such a thing. And when we come back in, in a minute, we'll actually give the formula here. We're not going to go through the proof. That's, as I said, is more something left to a second year linear algebra course. But we want to kind of see how this all ties in to the Gram-Schmidt process. Okay, so I'll pick up in a second.